Look at this, first tool I've bought in years, this little bitty band saw. I need it for some upcoming projects, but I really need a stand for it. So I thought this would be a great excuse to make kind of a multi-purpose tool stand that you can customize however you like. So this is a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood. It's just way too big for me to cut it on the table saw right now. So what I'm gonna do is just break it down into smaller pieces that I can manage on the table saw. So I'm just gonna use my circular saw and this little edge guide. I like to cut out plywood on this styrofoam foam insulation. You can pick up a sheet of this at the home center and it'll last you for years. I've probably been using this for close to a decade now. You might not have known that I've got this loft area here above my garage door that I can store that in and keep some other materials that are just too big to store anywhere else. And one of them is this half inch plywood. It's been up here for a long time. I might as well get this down now because I'm gonna need this for the drawer. Don't worry, I've got a system. If you read my most recent newsletter, you'll know the importance of running tests and how I don't always follow my own advice when I should. At any rate, to get these dados a good fit, I ran a couple of tests, well, three of them, on this board here, just adjusting the shims between those blades. What I'm looking for here is a snug fit, but not too tight. So like this first one was just way too loosey-goosey. That one really won't do anything. But finally on this third one, I got a nice snug fit that just fits down in there without having to pound it into place. I had a little bit of troubles with that recently, having to pound something into place. So these are gonna be the two sides of the cabinet. I'm gonna cut some grooves in here to hold the drawer runners. One of the most important things about making shop projects is that they're at a comfortable height for you. <clears throat> Everybody's gonna be a little bit different. I made this cabinet with the idea that it is either kind of expandable, you can make it a little bit higher or you can make it a little bit shorter without having to alter too much of the plans. Basically, all you need to do is cut these side pieces either a little longer or a little shorter to suit you. And there's just a couple other pieces you'll need to modify and all those instructions are in the plans. But all of these dado or groove positions for the drawer runners are gonna be the same. Nothing there changes. The key is to measure out the distance between each of these runners from the top, not the bottom. So I can just use my diagram here and measure out the distance from my rip fence to the blade for this first groove and then work my way down. And you don't have to drive yourself crazy trying to get these measurements to exactly match the numbers in the plan. All you need to do is make sure that whatever your measurement is, it matches on both panels you'll cut the drawers to fit the openings later. This piece is gonna be the top of the carcass and what I need to do is cut a groove right in the center of this one. This is gonna divide the two top drawers. I'll attach this sacrificial fence to my rip fence for cutting a rabbit around the edges of these pieces. That just lets me run this all the way over to the blades without damaging my rip fence. So now what I want to do is just kind of dry fit this together so that I can get an accurate measurement for the back. Look, you know the problem here is that <laughs> I should probably do this with long direction going the long direction of my workbench, you know? 
All right, something like that. Uh. There, how about that? Look at that. It's starting to look a little bit like a cabinet, sort of, not really. Now I can take some actual real world measurements for the inside of this rabbit because these dimensions are probably gonna be slightly different than what I have on the plans because the depth that I cut these and even the thickness of that three quarter inch lumber, which is probably not exactly three quarters of an inch, is gonna be slightly different. So as much as you can, always try to cut pieces to fit rather than just cut all of the pieces at the beginning of the project. They should get a nice fit. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is glue this together along those rabbit joints and then tack it together using my brad nail. You don't really need a brad nailer. You could just clamp this together. The glue is gonna do all of the heavy lifting here. The brad nailer is just gonna speed up the assembly process. Cabinet. So it does require just a little bit of tapping. This top slot is gonna get a full length shelf. You'll see that in a minute. I cut out this board to slide into this top slot here. But before I glue that in, I need to cut a groove along the center of this to match up with this upper groove. And even though I ran tests and I got a good fit, this board seems to fit a little tight into those grooves. So I think I'll just sand a little bit off of the underside. So that just kind of took a little bit of that top veneer layer off of this plywood sheet. Perfect. It just occurred to me that I need to attach the top, the top top of the cabinet right now. If I do it after installing that top shelf thing, I won't be able to get a drill in there. So what I wanna do is line this up so that the two sides in the back hang over all the same distance and then the, the front's gonna hang over further because there's gonna be those drawer faces. You can also just glue this top in place or you could screw it in from the top if the sight of the screws doesn't bother you. I mean, it's just a shop project. But personally for shop projects, I like to have the top screwed down so that I could replace them if I ever need to. Cut out these three spacer pieces to go down here on the bottom. If you decided to make your cabinet a little taller or a little shorter, you would change the size of these that same amount. In other words, if you made these sides an inch taller, you'd wanna make these an inch wider. Nothing fancy here, I'm just gonna glue these in place. This is really some crappy half inch plywood that I'm gonna use for those drawers, but that's okay. I think this is just sheathing material. It's been sitting around here forever, so this is a good excuse to use it. And that's a lot of pieces. That's a, all of the boards to make seven drawers. Now what I need to do is set up my dado stack again to make some rabbits. I've got enough scraps of quarter inch plywood. It should be enough to cut out all the bottoms of the drawers. I really don't know why, but making drawers is one of my least favorite things to do in woodworking. For some reason, they, they always just intimidate me a little bit. Or maybe it's just because it's always a repetitive task. Usually there's more than just one drawer to make. 
But I have found that using rabbit joints is definitely the way to go. It makes assembly much easier and it helps to square them up. And it's really helpful to glue in the bottom panels at the same time that you're gluing the sides together. I think the drawers gain most of their strength from that bottom panel being glued in. By the way, if you're looking for a bunch of shop projects, maybe you're just setting up a shop or you're thinking about setting up a shop, I want you to check out my award-winning online course called the Weekend Workshop. And in that course, I'll take you basically step-by-step step through setting up kind of a dream shop no matter what space you have, even a small space, even a space like this, a garage that you have to park a car in, everything I make is mobile and can be brought out. I think it's a really, it's a really cool system. But anyways, it'll give you a chance to make, well, basically all of the furniture you see in my shop is in that course. Plus I'll go over like, best ways to set up tool, workflow, lighting, air quality, all of this kind of stuff. And if you really like making drawers, I've got a project that you get to make a lot of drawers. Anyways, I hope you'll check it out. Head over to theweekendworkshop.com. I think if you're new to woodworking too, shop projects are kind of a great way to get your feet wet because you're building stuff you're gonna be needing anyway and there's like low risk involved. I mean, nobody's gonna come in and look at it. So if there's flaws in it, well, nobody's gonna care. When I make drawers, I usually make them with about a 16th of an inch gap on each side and about an eighth of an inch gap on the top. So for these drawers, I'm gonna make faces that are flush with the tops and that they extend down just to the bottom of the drawer runner. Those faces will act as a drawer stop to prevent it from going any further back. So here's how I'm lining these up. I'm taking my drawer face here and then I'm just drawing a line with a scrap of this three quarter inch plywood on both sides. Now I can take the drawer itself and line it up in the, on those lines. I'll just make sure that this is flush with the top. And I'll screw it in place using one inch screws. These top drawers are gonna be a little bit different. What I want to do is have the face come up a little bit higher rather than the rather than flush with the top, just to give that kind of a better, more finished look. And the other thing is, is that the drawer faces won't be centered on the drawer. They're gonna all be offset a little bit so that there could be a gap in between them. So I think what I can do is draw a line on the bottom and on this left side. So this should fit in there about like that. This would be better if I had actual one inch screws with pan heads that could drop down into the wood, but all I have are these one inch screws. These are like pocket hole screws. But again, since this is just a shop project, it doesn't really matter to me. tilted my table saw blade to about a 30 degree angle. I've made a lot of drawer pulls for my shop just like these. I'm rounding over these two sharp edges so that it's a little more comfortable to pull these open. Drawer pull placement is really just a matter of preference, whether you want to put it in the middle or up on top. I find it it's just so much easier to just make it flush with the top and then I don't have to find the center of each of these drawers, which is they're all different widths. So one thing I did is I cut out this piece here to just help me line these all up. So I can just make this flush with the top and then butt this over to it and glue it down.
I'm gonna tack it down so I don't have to bother clamping it. So here's something kind of crazy. I picked up these four inch heavy duty locking casters off of Amazon. And what's crazy about it is it came with a package of nuts and bolts if you wanted to install it that way, and a package of lag screws, which I'll use for this project, but that's not it. It, j it also came with a wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. That's crazy, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Anyways, it's a pretty good deal, it was like 22 bucks, so I'll, if you're interested, I'll try to remember to leave a link wherever you're watching this video. I'm applying some paste wax to all the runners and the bottoms of the drawers to make them slide in and out easy. So I attached my new bandsaw to the top of this stand and it's really stable. The locking wheels do a great job and there's no fear of this thing tipping over. I was concerned when I built this thing whether it would be top heavy and that's why in underneath that bottom drawer, there's that gap there. My thought was if I wanted to, I could put some sandbags down there just to give the base some extra weight. But in this case, it's not necessary at all. Plus I'm gonna have probably tools and other junk in all of those drawers. I like to have on my tool stands shallow, small top drawers that I can keep tools that are specific to the tool on the stand so I can easily access out wrenches and other little wrenches and all that kind of junk without having to go search for it. And again, I designed this so that it's easy to make this either a little bit taller or a little bit shorter depending on what you're going to use it for. All you gotta do is change the length of the two side panels, the back panel, and then those filler strips on the bottom. You don't have to change the, the position or the size of the drawers or the top or anything else. And lastly, if you'd like to build this yourself, I've got plans available over at shopwwmm.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.